Hi there, hope you're having a fantastic day. While there's absolutely no shadow of a doubt that life as we know it has completely changed and is gonna to continue to change for the unseeable future. Now COVID-19 has really put us into what really feels like an alternate universe. And so many of us just wanna push reset on 2020 and we just wanna stop and start again, if only. But we know that we can't, and this isn't a computer game that we can just turn off and start again. It's, it's real life, it's just a surreal version of it. And really everyone is just doing their best to deal with our new reality, especially when it comes to our kids. And uh, one of the government uh, directories um, that we've, we've all sort of seen and heard a million times now and hearing repeatedly is around social distancing and self-isolation. So as, as many parents, uh, many parts of the world, sorry, are starting to move into stage three and stage four lockdowns, where people are confined to their homes, um, many parents are really start starting to ask, what does this mean for my family? Especially when it comes to keeping children mentally stimulated, socially connected, educated, and entertained whilst indoors. Um, and, and one thing that of course is all kids that want to, want to do is, is to sort of to play games and to be in, in front of a screen. So if you have concerns about the effects of gaming, uh, you may, um, definitely want to be listening to this interview and uh, you're definitely in the right place. So today we're absolutely thrilled to speak with Andrea Castello, otherwise known as Dad the Gamer. And um, I've just been given authority to call him AC. So <laughs> now, <laughs> whilst a podiatrist by profession, um, AC has a real passion for gaming. And as a father, Really, what's become apparent to him over the last several years um, with the likes of Fortnite and so many other gaming platforms is just how many parents are worried about the nature of gaming and what it means for their children. Now, Andrea's or AC's mission uh, is to empower parents by demystifying game gaming. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm really well. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really excited. It's, uh, you know, it, it's really cool to be talking about you know something other than feet to be honest um so yeah i'm really i'm really glad to be here and talking about you know what has been a passion of mine since uh since i can remember eight nine ten years of age so um you know thank you very much for having me oh just i'm really really grateful for your time now you take a really interesting view and spin on gaming that a lot of viewers are not going to be expecting um so it's been said that rather than gaming being a point of frustration um and even anger um gaming can be something that actually brings families together so can you explain a little bit of your viewpoint on this sure i mean i think it's really important for me, the first thing is to understand is most games and gaming as a, um, I guess as a, as a pastime, it's always been something that's been designed to play together. So I'm um, thinking back to um, even Space Invaders, you could get the two control pads and play, the, the, the joysticks and play together. Um, and so gaming as a rule has always kind of been around playing together. Even when you play solos, you know, you'll see kids sitting around and watching the one kid play the game um, with the advent of things now like streaming. Kids are literally watching other people play games and talking to them while they're playing games. So there's this kind of notion that um, gaming is somehow seen as an, a solitary, isolated type uh, pursuit, that you sit in a room and, and play. And that's something that I think, uh, as a, when thinking back 20 years ago, so parents, you know, my age now, we have this view of uh, gaming being back when we were like the nerdy kids sitting in a dark room with the windows shut and um, you know being socially isolated and struck out from the world. Um, and the reality is that gaming has really evolved now and it's a real, uh, you know, you have huge communities with people having tens of thousands of followers around gaming. And so I look at it uh, from the perspective of it's, it's actually a pursuit now that you know, as a parent, it's a really good opportunity to kind of get involved and um, and 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 uh, take that take on that interest with the child. And, and I think when we talk about that frustration, 
we all fall into the trap of romanticizing the past. I say this a lot. When we were kids, we'd get home from school, we'd all go to the school with the kids in the same area as us, we'd jump on the bike, we'd ride down to the park and play and the first streetlight came on and we would come home and that was our way of socializing, debriefing outside of school. Um, kids don't have that now. We're too frightened to even let them get past the letterbox and go out on their own. And, um, and so I really see gaming, especially as parents, if we take the time to understand um, what our children are doing and talk to them about it, um, explain that, to, uh, you know, have, have that kind of connection with them. It, they love it. Kids absolutely adore it. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of gravitate and want to talk to you and gush to you about it. And it's a real nice way of opening a door to other conversations that we yeah. want to have to children as, as parents. So, so this message isn't that kids should be playing games during, uh, during this isolation period, rather than the opposite. So this is a really realistic view of the current situation. Um, and now that parents are home from work uh, in, in isolation um, also, gaming is a great opportunity for parents to bond with their kids. Um, now, in your article, you mentioned um, this is actually uh, backed up by research from the Arizona State University. Um, that parents actually miss a huge opportunity when they walk away from playing video games with their kids. Um, and we'll speak a little bit um, more about that research um, in our chat. Now, so we published your article titled Games List, the, um, the, the, sorry, Games List the Kids Will Enjoy During Times of Isolation. For someone who hasn't read the article, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what it's about and just what inspired you to write it? And then we'll get stuck into the questions. Cool. So what inspired me to write it was I knew that there was going to be the situation where mums and dads were going to be locked in with their kids at home, okay, potentially. And then what the upshot of that was going to be is how do these kids get their social interaction, okay? Um, that notion that, you know, if you're stuck at home and you're not at school where these children normally play with their friends, how are they going to um, get contact with with their, with their friends or with their peers. And, and gaming provides a fantastic opportunity to do that through the online um, component of games, which I think is really important for parents to play with so that they can understand that it's not some a nebulous, nasty person sitting on the other end, that they are having a conversation with friends about, you know, what hairstyle they're going to choose. Like my, my daughter plays and they talk about the most random stuff that, you know, 10 year old kids will talk about. Um, but I also wanted to, in, in light of that, also explain to parents, like, the kids will need this social interaction. We're social beings, being human beings, we're, we're, we need that social interaction, we're gregarious. So giving them the opportunity to do that and not just shutting that off. Now, I want to temper it by saying, I'm not saying you want the kids on the screens for 15 hours a day. I'm not advocating that at all. And some of those people sitting there say, you're just saying kids want to play games all the time. No, but I think it's a really good social outlet for them with their peers, but it's also, as I said, a great opportunity for parents to sit in there and play. And then putting together a list, because I understand that parents don't necessarily know what games are appropriate for their kids and what games aren't appropriate for their kids. So I wanted to give parents a list of games, say 10 across each platform, if they're not sure, okay, my kid plays on mobile, what games can I allow my child to play that are going to be safe? and I'm going to have some semblance of control over and they're not going to be doing something that they, they shouldn't be doing. So that was really the input just to kind of help really more than, more than anything else. So, so just to clarify for everyone um, watching and listening, this is not advocating for the fact that, I mean, children are still going to have their distant learning, they're still going to be doing their, their, their schoolwork. This is the social component when they, outside of this, this, this school hours and outside of their education, given that they're in, at home in isolation, that, this is gaming is an opportunity to st still be social um, with with others. So um, I'd like to take a phrase out of the article before we get stuck into the questions. Yep. And you mentioned often parents don't understand that many video games are meant to be shared and can teach young people about science, lit literacy, and problem solving. And gaming with um with uh, with their children offers offers um, parents countless ways to insert their own teaching moment. Um, and not only do we get to bond and have fun with our kids, but we, we can also, also help them learn along the way. Um, I think that's really, really interesting. And the video game um, play, video game play um, becomes a point of conversation, not a point of conflict. So on the, on the flip side, um, parents can actually teach their kids lots through gaming. Um, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, look, I mean, I'll, I'll, I always use the example of my son. He's 13 years old. Um, he's been playing Fortnite for a couple of years. And I jump on and play with him. And, you know, I'm friends with his friends. And so we'll sit in a party and I just sit in the background and have a listen to the chatter that, the, that goes on. And I'd like to say there's more than one occasion where I've picked him up on the tone that he's used. Or, you know, perhaps, you know, um, we work as a, 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 you work as a team to kind of, meet certain objectives and do certain things together. So you're working as a team to solve a problem to come to a desired outcome. And when you think about most of us that work in teams at work or whatever, as sports teams or whatever, it's all about that. So I kind of look at it through the prism of we, and after the game we'll debrief, we'll have a conversation about all, well, you know, that tone that you used in that, that circumstance wasn't, you know, probably the best way you could have spoken about it, how could you have done it better? And we have a conversation, not about the game, but perhaps his behaviour in game, or, you know, if someone says something too, like, uh, you know, we've had some conversations where, uh, instances where something's been said in game that are possibly not appropriate, um, and one of their friends has said it, and we've had a conversation about perhaps why that's not appropriate, and what the proper response should be um, and yeah I just think it's a really and because it's coming from it as an equal it's not me sitting up here having no understanding telling him about something I know nothing about um, it's me being in the same space having a conversation at the same level um, which then allows the walls to come down and him to share things with me that perhaps he wouldn't have possibly done if I'm sitting there going get off your screen it's a waste of time blah 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 um, and look, you know, that's what happened. That's what happened to me. Don't, don't, there's no future in gaming. I mean, now people are earning half a million dollars a month playing games. So, yeah. you know, I guess that's probably the, my response to that point. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get stuck into the questions. So question number one, is online gaming good for my kids if they are forced to stay home and be um, in isolation? And if so, why? Okay. In moderation. I think it's very good, okay? Um, so you referred, to, there were a couple of studies that I, I pointed to in my article. Um, and there's a 2018 study that's called um, Video Games Are Not Socially Isolating. Um, and it basically points that the reputation of computer games or video games um, being socially isolating is actually contrary to the reality, which is there's a wealth of social opportunities that now exist in modern day platforms. So, you know, if you've got a, if you've got an only child who's at home, you know, being homeschooled and whatever, they're only out there. They can't go outside. They're only out that is going to be that, you know. Um, and if they jump on for an hour and have a bash with their friends, it's like recess and lunch. You get out there. You, you get it all out, you have a bit of fun, you have a bit of a laugh. And, you know, anybody who's heard their kids play, most of the times it's laughter and fun that they're having. You know, it's just mentally, you know, it kind of, you know, people say you shouldn't be using it for an escape 100%, but these are interesting times. There, you know, is a little bit of escape, you know, whether it's reading a book or watching a Netflix show or playing a game, is it really that bad? I don't think it is. I think it's an opportunity for our kids to mentally debrief shut off, go and do something very different with their friends, have some fun, socially connect, have a chat with their friends about how their friends are coping with what's going on. I think this is the thing that we fail to understand, that kids have conversations about all sorts of things. Um, and this is just another avenue, another way that, you know, no different than a telephone, to have a conversation with their friends and debrief in a way that they possibly wouldn't with, with us as parents. Yes, yes. Let's get stuck into question number two. Should I be playing games with my kids? 100% yes. 100% yes. Um, you alluded to that study, that Arizona State University study looking at um, playing games with kids. 100% yes. Um, there's a real opportunity there to create a bond over a common interest. And you know what? Even if you don't like it, suck it up. We're asking kids to do things that they don't like. Playing Mario Kart for half an hour with your son or daughter, even if they belt you, and I don't let my kids win, um, but even if they belt you... You don't. Um, no, not at all. No. Hey, life's not that easy, right? They, they will come a time where they'll beat me at everything, so let me have my time now. Um, but like, it, for me, it's that real thing of... Um, you, as I said, as I alluded to before, it's that time of problem solving together. You're doing things together. You're showing an interest in something that a kid loves. And I always make the point, if if a kid was out there swinging their tennis racket and playing tennis and you're sitting out every game or their dance recital or 
whatever, the kids love you being there. Gaming is no different. It's a passion or it's an interest for them. Take an interest in it. And as I said, you will find that the walls will come down. You'll start having conversations with kids that you never thought you would have a conversation with whilst playing. It's a bit like talking in the car. They can't get out. Um, but their walls are down. They're concentrating on everything. They're looking at you more at that level and they will open up. And that's what that study showed out of Arizona State University. So, um, yeah, definitely. And they're fun. Like, they really are fun. There are so many options with games now. They're just good fun. And um, how can parents um, have some control over their their child's online experience and to but, but protect them from harm in, in that regard also? Have you sort of had- Look, that's a great question. That? That's a great question. It's one I get asked a lot. Um, so I, we could probably do a whole thing just on that. I think um, the, the first part of it, it has to be, um, there are, every single platform has some kind of security measure online. So PlayStation Network has theirs, Xbox Live has theirs, Nintendo has theirs. So I think understanding that, setting up the account properly when you initially set something up for a child means that you can set parameters and controls over what they can and can't do online. I think that's the first part. The second part is actually understanding the game itself and what they're doing, okay? Because from that point if you understand you can make a decision around your child whether it is something that the child should be doing or shouldn't be doing and you know i have parents say to me well you know i'm not going to let my child play Fortnite without having any understanding of what Fortnite entails but they'll let their child watch avengers end you know um end game right now to me, there's a bit of a disconnect there. And I can tell you as a kid, there's probably going to be a bit of a disconnect there. Why can I watch that but not do this? <laughs> so I think it's that thing of with understanding, dialogue changes. It's not top down. You know, it's more of a conversation rather than a directive. And you will then learn how to protect. And nothing is infallible. But if a child, if a child feels that they can come and talk to you about this stuff, then even if something does slip through, they're far more likely to come to you and have a conversation about, hey, mum, this happened, or dad, this happened. Is that right? And you can talk that through. And that's definitely been my personal experience. And talking to fellow dad gamers and mum gamers, there are, plenty, there are plenty of gamer girls out there, okay? Um, there's, we find that, there's, um, you know, running joke is that, you know, a family that games together, wins together. And I think, you know, in, in this kind of environment, especially, I don't, I, I tend to think it has probably more weight now than, than, than ever before. Yeah. Well, let's get stuck into the last question. What would be one game um, from each platform that you would recommend for parents to play with their kids? This is probably the hardest question for me to answer one game. Um, so what I've tried to do is um, look at ones that, looking at from a parenting perspective as well. So um, I know we, I could sit there and say that for kids and, and whatever, but I think, um, so I'll kind of run through them. I think across a lot of platforms, there's a game called Rocket League. It's basically car soccer, okay? Um, it's crazy, the ball flies around everybody. Nobody's really that good at it, okay? So it's a kind of a level. <laughs> So parents kind of get in there and, oh, I'm no good at it. Don't worry, nobody really is any good at it. Um, so I think Rocket League's a good one. That's multi. That kind of, there's every platform has has that. Um, but if you look specifically, I think um, for me, on Switch, you can't go past Mario Kart. There was actually a study that came out that showed that um, people that play Mario Kart actually are better drivers than people who don't play Mario <laughs> Kart. That, that was a really I funny thing. <laughs> So Mario Kart's great um, and it's so much fun and you can play up to four or five players on that one. Um, mobile PC, I've said Minecraft. It's a thinking game. You can play with your child together. Um, they can play online with their friends and it's pretty pretty safe. Um, and, you know, that's, again, multi-platform. Um, and then PlayStation 4, I've, I've thrown this one out for PS4, I think. A new game came out. It's called Dreams. Um, it is a one-player game, but it's a beautiful game in so far it's it's... People have created and developed their own games. And you can teach your kids. Your kids can go in there and actually make their own games within the game. Um, and I think Dreams is a really sweet game um, and, and something that um, you can, varying levels and things like that. Um, and Xbox, I've just kind of diverted, reverted back to your Rocket Leagues and Rocket Leagues and your Minecraft. So that's where I think. I think Rocket League, Minecraft, you stay there. A bit of Mario Kart, a bit of Dreams, I don't think you can be, be wrong. And, and I've, I've made it so that, you know, you can look at it from a four, five, six-year-old as well as a 13, 14-year-old. I've tried to keep it quite general in that sense as well, rather than be specific to ages. 
Well, oh, the agony of choice. But, but that's just the thing these days. You know, when we look at <laughs> other, you know, points in history when, you know, people have been confined to self-isolation in war and everything else, they didn't have technology, they didn't have everything else that we have these days. So really, we are very, very fortunate to be um, living in, in this, this point in history. But really, so to recap, so, so during this time of um, self-isolation, video gaming really does provide an opportunity for us to bond with our kids, um, to keep their young minds occupied uh, and to help them learn whilst also managing um, their own internal issues with um, so social isolation. So the next logical question is, which games? Well, I guess everybody watching, you'll have to just read um, AC's article uh, to see. Um, and from that perspective, we would love to, to be able to know also to put some comments down the bottom, which, which games um, you love, and if there's any that we've missed also. But AC, we are so, um, so grateful for your time today. Um, and you've given lots of um, parents all around Australia some, some tips. Um, if, if they've got any other questions, whereabouts can, like, can they find you? Uh, look, um, fake, social media is probably the best. I'm across all um, the platforms, so both, uh, so Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I have got a website. Um, it's getting put together. Um, the website's dadthegamer.com, um, but everything else is dadthegamer29. Um, so, you know, look at that on any of those profiles. And please hit me up. Um, I love helping. Um, so, you know, my, I always see my role here is, there's no judgment ever on my role. I mean, everybody's got different things, but I just figure that gaming is something that is not going away. It's something that's going to be here. Esports are going to be massive. So as parents, if you don't know, who do you go to? Where do, where do you go to get the, the advice? And look, if I can't give you the answer, I will point you in the right direction. I will go and hunt the answer myself. That's my promise to, to everybody who's, who's, who's following me and, and, um, and is interested in it. Because as I said, it's such a big part now of, of the adolescent um, culture that as parents, we really should be involved in across it as, as, as much as, as anybody. I see. Thanks so, so much for your time. I can't wait to chat with, with you again really, really soon. Take care. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Thank you so much. Okay. Ciao. Bye.